Welcome to Just a Minute. My name is Nicholas Parsons, and as the minute walls fades away once more, it is my pleasure to welcome the four interesting and exciting personalities who are going to play just a minute. We welcome back three regular players of the game, which is uh, Derek Nimmo, Peter Jones, and Paul Merton, and somebody who has not played the game so often, that is Stephen Frost. Would you please welcome all four of them? Beside me sits Liz Trott, who's going to keep the score and blow a whistle when the 60 seconds are up. And, as usual, I am going to ask our four panellists to speak in turn, if they can, on the subject that I give them, and they will try and do that without hesitation, repetition, or deviating from the subject. We begin the show with Paul Merton, and the subject that Ian Messer has come up with is Odd Surnames. Can you tell us something about that in just a minute, starting now? Nimmo, Frost, <laughs> Parsons, Hitler... Furtwängler, Winkel, these are all odd surnames. We can't be responsible for our surnames, it's what our parents... Stephen Frost. At least we're not named after a London borough. <laughs> Give Stephen a bonus point, because we enjoyed the challenge, but he wasn't, uh, Paul wasn't actually deviating from the subject. So, Paul, you get a point for being interrupted. You keep the subject, odd surnames, 49 seconds, starting now. Before Adolf became the man that he was, his parents... Oh, I've said parents twice, isn't that funny? Yeah. It's three times now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, say, I'll say again, four parents yeah. there. <laughs> But Derek Nimmo challenge when you do his attention to it. <laughs> 43 seconds for you, Derek. A correct challenge. Odd surnames. Actually, started. Adolf Hitler's original surname was Schickelgruber, which I think was even more unfortunate, actually, than Hitler. I don't think I would have liked it. Stephen challenge. A repetition of Hitler. Hitler. Hitler is not the subject on the card. It's odd surnames. Oh, so, Stephen, you're getting to know how to play this game now. You got in very rapidly there. A point for you. The subject, 36 seconds. Odd surnames starting now. When I was a little boy, I lived on a beach in St. Ives, and there was a girl who... Paul, oh, deviation. You surely didn't live on a beach. You <laughs> might live near a beach. We were very poor. Yeah. <laughs> I think, actually, the council would have taken you into care. You could like, live on the beach. Or surely the time. tide coming in early yeah. a major problem. <laughs> Damp yeah. was a problem, yes. <laughs> the TV's gone out the front door again, Dad. <laughs> I don't know, I'll be back at four o'clock. <laughs> So as I'm dishing out bonus points, we give Paul a point for a correct challenge and a bonus point because we enjoyed the witticism and 32 seconds also to tell us something about odd surnames starting now. My real surname is Martin, but when I wanted to become a member of Equity, they said, oh, we've already got somebody by that surname. You can't possibly become a person. Stephen. Uh, hesitation. I think so, Stephen. A point to you and the subject. 22 seconds left. Odd surnames starting now. Crotchel Vashen was the name of my English teacher. Hesitation. <laughs> uh, he, he just uh, seemed to stop. That's it. I just saw my English teacher in the audience. <laughs> Peter, there's 17 seconds for you to tell us something about odd surnames starting now. Actresses sometimes have very weird names, and I... There was one called Katie Bangs. B-A-N-G-S. <laughs> which did seem an extraordinary name to leave without uh, changing it. I mean, had I been called Peter Bangs... Uh... <laughs> Derek, your challenge. Two bangs. There were two bangs. <laughs> Derek, you've got in with two seconds to go on odd surnames starting well, now. Well, Nimmo sounds rather like a detergent, actually. <laughs> Whoever is speaking as the whistle goes gains an extra point. On this occasion it was Derek Nimmo and he and Stephen Frost and Paul Merton are equal in the lead just ahead of Peter Jones. Peter Jones, your turn to begin. The subject is my favourite screen goddess. Will you tell us something about her in just a minute starting now? Well, there was Garbo, of course, but then when I was 15, I went to see a film called Ecstasy with Hedy Lamarr oh. featuring in it, and she was much publicised because she appeared in the nude, it said. And naturally, this is what appealed to me most about it. <laughs> I didn't care much about the narrative, but uh, the sight of this uh, lovely woman... Uh, Paul Merton challenge. Hesitation, unfortunately. Yes. Yes, well, he would. 
I saw it as well. She you did, yes. Lovely, Very yes. disappointing, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> really, about ten seconds, and she was miles away. I know. <laughs> Paul Merton, a correct challenge. My favourite screen goddess, 37 seconds left, starting now. My favourite screen goddess was Sissy Fairfax, queen of the silver screen. There was nothing this woman wouldn't do. She'd be one week hanging from a mountain cliff. The next, she'd be hanging from... Oh, the silver uh, seven <laughs> Parents hanging. Uh, the yeah. old days, yes. yes. Too many hangings. She, she was doing too much hanging, wasn't she? Yes. She was known for it. <laughs> If there, something to, if there was something to hang off, she'd hang off it. <laughs> sissy. Right, Stephen, you've got him with 27 seconds. Another point, of course, correct challenge. And you tell us something about your, well, the subject is my favourite screen goddess, starting now. My favourite screen goddess was, of course, Sarah Bangs. Not many people have heard of her, but Peter <laughs> knows that she is a very good actress and was, in her time, one of... Paul Merton Jones. TV Asian, he was talking about Katie Bangs. Was he? Yes. Oh, she's a sister. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows Sarah Banks. And also establish that she was on the stage and she wasn't a screen goddess. No. So, uh, Paul, I agree with the challenge. 17 seconds, my favourite screen goddess, starting now. The first major screen goddess, I suppose, in the early days was a woman called Theda Bara, who it was thought her name was an anagram of Arab death, as indeed it is. And she was a bank figure. She had very black eye shadow and long fingernails. <laughs> Paul Merton kept going to the whistle when gained that extra point for doing so, and with other points in that round, he's taken the lead. Uh, Stephen Frost, your turn to begin. The subject, mind. Will you tell us something about mind in just a minute, starting now? I travelled to the show here tonight on the underground, and when I stepped off the tube, I heard a voice say, Mind the gap. <laughs> and it was that particular larynx fortunate type thing coming from the... <laughs> What's another word for voice? <laughs> I know. Once you've said it, it comes to a full stop. Paul, you've got in hesitation. 49 seconds, mind starting now. There are some people, they call themselves hypnotists, who make fortunes by appearing in front of the public and attempting to hypnotise them into thinking that they are disc jockeys or all-in wrestlers or members of the government. And I've never been to one of these shows, but I got a good feeling that I would be somebody who would be very easy to lure into some kind of France, you stand on the platform there. Derek Nimmo challenge. Breathing. Breathing. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Breathing. Yeah. We haven't all got the benefit of life support uh, machines. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to give you the benefit of the doubt, but I've changed my mind now. <laughs> all right, give him a bonus point because we liked his, uh, his joke. But Derek Nimmo has a point for the correct challenge and 24 seconds on mind starting now. The popular definition of an Australia is it has a closed mind and an open fly. I always think that's very unfair. <laughs> Derogatory because I found them to be people of huge intelligence and wit. Then Yorkshire, they say, Mind where you're going, lad. I think that's a rather nice way because mind ties to intelligence, to the brain. <laughs> Paul Merton John. Is there a sort of a hesitation in there? No, I don't think so. Quite... No, no, no. 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 Uh, <laughs> I should have got a 17 chairman in the audience. <laughs> Could we ask one of them to step on the stage? <laughs> I know you think they might favour you if they did, Derek. But anyway, I'm always fair in the game. Four seconds for you to continue on mind starting now. I'd like to think that mind is more important than matter. And I think... <laughs> Derek Newman was speaking as a whistle when gained an extra point and others, but he's still in second place behind Port Merton, who's in the lead, then Stephen Frost and Peter Jones in that order. And Derek, it is your turn to begin. The subject, radio phone-ins. Will you tell us something about those in just a minute, starting now? I don't awfully like, um, radio phones. <laughs> Stephen, um, there's yes, a hesitation. Definitely, yeah. Yes, definitely, yeah, yes, definitely. Yeah. definitely. Yeah. And you got in very sharply with 58 seconds to go on radio phone in Stephen, starting now. The one thing wrong with radio phone is the crackly line that when the people talk to the radio presenter... <laughs> Paul Merton Chan. Hesitation. Yes, and everything. Right, 53 seconds, Paul. Radio phone ins starting now. I believe it was round about 1974. I used to listen to them in the early days, and in those times, you got a lot of interest in people phoning up at about half past one in the morning, because this was long before people would phone in and say, Hello. Stephen Frost. <laughs> two, two people. 
Two people <laughs> yet in 32 seconds, Stephen. Radio phone-ins starting now. I think radio phone-ins are an excuse for a lack of script or production from the radio company themselves because all they're doing is relying on people to call up the presenter and put their point of view across... <laughs> Paul Merton Challenge. Repetition of presenter from before. Yes, you talked about presenters before, yeah. I'm afraid, Stephen. Yeah. So Paul's got back in again with 20 seconds on radio phone-ins, starting now. Of course, it is now a very popular means of filling up the schedule, you simply say. I've got Alf from Hackney on the line. What do you think? Well, I think they should... <laughs> they ain't never charged. Three things. There were too much thinking going yeah, on, not, yes. No, that's a rare thing for radio phone <laughs> Five seconds, Derek. Radio phone in starting now. First time I was on a radio phone in was in Melbourne and Australia. And someone rang up and Paul Merton. I, it must be surely a repetition of Australia. <laughs> <laughs> You yes. know, I've been to Australia. I don't go on about it. <laughs> no, I agree with you. He never ceases to remind us that he keeps going to Australia. But, and it is true that he does so. But he didn't he actually repeat Australia in this round. No, but he was talking about his own personal experience of being on the first phone-in. And the subject is phone-ins. <laughs> He uh, uh, personalised it, whereas it was a more general Henry question. Tim. Peter Jones had a correct challenge, and he's got him with two seconds to go on. Radio phone-ins starting now. They're very cheap in every sense of the word. <laughs> Peter Jones got the point for speaking as a whistle when he's still in fourth place, but he's not far behind Stephen Frost and Derek Nimmo and then Paul Merton in ascending order. Paul Merton, your turn to begin. The subject... Predictions. Can you tell us something about that in just a minute, starting now? I predict that very soon Derek Nimmo will tell us about his adventures in Australia. <laughs> he will regale the audience with his wonderful tales of life on the other side of the world, how he walked through the bush, how he stunned a kangaroo with a particularly <laughs> dull monologue. Yes. <laughs> Peter. Uh, how he. Right. You well repeated done. that. He did repeat how he. Well done, Peter. 47 seconds on predictions. It's an Australian town. <laughs> 47 seconds starting now. Prediction starting now. Yes, thank you very much for reminding me what the subject is. <laughs> well, uh, it's um, <laughs> predictions are things best to be avoided because you can go terribly wrong. Even old Morris Almanac is not absolutely infallible, let alone cabinet ministers and the prime minister himself is not uh, immune from making dreadful mistakes about what is going to happen in the next uh, year or so. Now, if... <laughs> Hesitation, I'm afraid. Yes, I'm yes, afraid. It was, so, yes, it uh, was, yes, very slight. So, Paul, one, yes. you've got him with... <laughs> 19 seconds on predictions, starting now. Although I have 19 seconds left on predictions, I predict here and now, in front of the assembled audience, that I will be buzzed before that time is up. Somebody will catch me on hesitation, repetition, deviation. One of those three things will trip me up before that clock hits the top. <laughs> I, I was wrong. You were wrong, yes. <laughs> and they could have had you for repetition or deviation, but they didn't. You kept going, getting an extra point for... Speaking as the whistle went and have increased your lead at the end of the round, Peter Jones, your turn to begin. The subject is dimples. Peter, tell us something about Dimples in just a minute, starting now. I remember Dimples very well. Dimples McNulty, who was <laughs> the cigarette vendor at the old Bag of Nails Club in Lyle Street. She had the most wonderful legs, and she went round selling these uh, cancerous sticks of uh, tobacco <laughs> to people, and probably was responsible for a lot of lung disease and many others, for all I know. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. I, I take it back. Uh, but um, she was a very sweet girl. And, uh, she was called Dimples because she had several dimples. They weren't all facial. 
and um, the bag of nails, I don't know whether any of you remember, senior citizens may remember the bag of nails. It was, <laughs> I can't go on rambling like this. Um, Well, they very unsportingly let you go for 59 oh, no, seconds it's on really that. Nice. No, I may have got really into deep water there. Yeah. <laughs> but they enjoyed it. They enjoyed it. And so yes. did we, Peter. So, Peter, we're going to give it to you. You've got one second on dimples starting now. And they weren't all. So Peter Jones got a lot of reaction in that round. Didn't get many points, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> he's standing fourth place just behind Stephen Frost. Uh, and Derek Nimmo is training Paul Merton in that order. And Stephen, it's your turn to begin. David Copperfield, will you tell us something about him in just a minute, starting now? Charles Dickens once said, If all my novels could be as good as David Copperfield, I'll die a happy woman. Of course, he was misquoted at the time. <laughs> I'll die a happy man. <laughs> Repetition of die day happy. <laughs> <laughs> Just to rub it in. Fifty seconds for you, Paul, on David Copperfield, starting now. There is a magician who's called David Copperfield who's got these bright white teeth and these kind of Hollywood looks, and he's meant to make us believe that he's <laughs> gifted. Peter Jones a child. There was a slight hesitation in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes, oh, definitely, yeah. somewhere. <laughs> 40 wow. seconds for you, Peter, on David Copperfield, starting now. Well, I welcome the arrival of David Copperfield, the magician, in the flesh. Uh, and... Uh, uh, <laughs> Jerry Nimmo challenge. No hesitation. Yes, Terry. 18 seconds for you on David Copperfield, starting now. Well, the first time I saw David Copperfield was in Kuala Lumpur, actually. <laughs> Certainly, if they won, but two enormous oh, cards. Madness challenge, no. Deviation, why isn't it Australia? <laughs> Derek, an incorrect challenge. <laughs> 13 seconds on David Copperfield, starting David now. David Copperfield had the most beautiful girlfriend called Claudia Schiffer, to who he gave a five-carat... Paul Merton the... challenge. Deviation, it's Schiffer. <laughs> Claudia Schiffer. Well, it's Schiffer. It's, it's <laughs> Claudia Schiffer. Mm. <laughs> well, maybe when he's had a few, he can answer it's Schiffer. I don't know. And, uh, anyway... Schiffer, Schmoosher, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Derek, you keep the subject of David Copperfield. Eight seconds, starting now. His real name was David Popkin. Uh, Stephen, for a bit of a hesitation. I think though, a little think, hesitation yeah. too. Six seconds for you, Stephen, on David Copperfield, starting now. He's made the Tower of Liberty disappear. <laughs> uh, Paul Merton Challenge. <laughs> Before he did the Statue of Liberty, he had to practice. There's one just off Ellis Island, it's called the Tower of Liberty. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say deviation, but as there is no Tower of Liberty, <laughs> he may well have made it disappear. <laughs> So having challenge, you've actually given it back to Stephen mm. with four seconds on David Copperfield starting now. And he's going to fly without the aid of strings or any forced air coming up through the... <laughs> <laughs> well, Stephen has only played the game twice before. He's now getting the hang of it and kept going magnificently till the whistle went. And he gained an extra point for doing so. He's just behind Eric Nimmo. Paul Merton is just ahead. And Paul, it's your turn to begin. The subject, raspberries. Yes, you can take that any way you wish. And there are 60 seconds to do so, starting now. I don't like them. Hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> Hesitation, yes. Don't want to talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> I've said enough. I've, said enough. I've, made, I've stated my case. Right, yes. Don't care for them. But right, sort of, just a minute raspberry, in your other words, right. Mm. 58 seconds for you, Derek. Raspberries, starting now. Well, a raspberry can be rather rude noise, rather like... <laughs> but every... <laughs> Two rathers. 55 seconds for you, Stephen, on raspberries, starting now. They're purpley, pinky, reddish, and I love them with cream on custard, even treacle. Pick them fresh while the dew's still sparkling on their little rotund shapes and force them down your throat, buckets at a time, so that the juice... Uh, Paul Merton challenge. Can I remind you this is radio? <laughs> Uh, Paul, what is your actual challenge within the rules of just a minute? There is no actual challenge within the rules of just a minute. <laughs> so Stephen gets a point for being interrupted. He keeps the subject of raspberries. 42 seconds are left starting now. The best time to eat a fresh raspberry... <laughs> Derek Nimmo challenge. Repetition of eat. Mm. Yes, you were eating them before. Right. 39 seconds. Raspberries with you, uh, Derek, starting now. 
I like to put the liqueur made from raspberries into white wine. It's very similar to a care, which was invented by the mayor of Dijon. Framboise is what they call it. And absolutely delicious it is. I have raspberry canes in my garden in Northamptonshire, which is a most beautiful place to grow <laughs> this particular fruit. And you can have them frozen these days, and somehow it's particularly decadent. Paul Merton Charles. Repetition of particular? Yes, you did say particular before. Particularly... particularly. Particularly decadent, I said, if you listen. <laughs> you can't say particular decadent, can you? you? Said, but, yeah, but you said particularly before as well, so you did repeat particularly. And Paul is correct, and he has 15 seconds on raspberries, <laughs> starting now. The raspberry is my favourite fruit. I know. Like <laughs> you don't just challenge. No, he said that he didn't like them. Yeah. <laughs> no, Dr. Stevens' description. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to go out and get a I'll punnet. <laughs> yeah, he's won me over. <laughs> totally. I, I, think, to, I, I think sat down here tonight and ain't me raspberry man. I'm not proud to say I'd go out and buy a punnet of them now. <laughs> You've gone on a raspberry bringe after that. Yeah, night. lovely. Having established the beginning that you don't like them, you can't now change But I was it, lying doesn't. before. <laughs> Yes, I know you were, but it doesn't really matter. Peter's got in with 13 seconds on raspberries, <laughs> starting now. Quite the best raspberries come from Scotland, and they come at different times of the year, but mostly in the summer, when they gather them, these people with kilts and whatever they have on their head. <laughs> they... I don't know why you have to put a kilt on to gather your raspberries in Scotland. <laughs> Oh, well, devious I just... Devious thought, I think, in a way, Peter. You kept going to the whistle went, and you're catching up on the others. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> and it's your turn to begin, Peter. Ah. The subject is the knowledge. 60 seconds, starting now. Well, that has something to do with taxi drivers who have to gain what is called the knowledge, that is, to know every street and house number in the capital. And I think it's a gargantuan task, and I see them all the time driving their little motorbikes around with big pads on them and maps, trying to learn where these places are. And most of them succeed, and I think I've never stumped a London London taxi driver by asking us. <laughs> Paul Merton challenge. The repetition of taxi driver. Yes. Oh, yes, yeah, that's right. Right, yes. right, yes. So, Paul, you've got in with 32 seconds left. Tell us something about the knowledge starting now. I believe it takes them about four years to learn this particular knowledge, and as Peter says, the streets of London are filled with people going around on their motorbikes studying all this kind of stuff. I once lived in a road called Lavender. Peter Jones challenge. Well, he said, as Peter said, and that does seem like repetition to me. <laughs> Peter, it is a repetitious thought, but it's not repetition within the rules of just a minute. So we give you a bonus point because we enjoy the challenge. Paul gets a point for being interrupted. He keeps the subject. The knowledge, 21 seconds, starting now. If you go to the highest mountain in Tibet, on the very top peak you will find... Stephen... Not this time of night, Gov. <laughs> Right. Stephen, we enjoyed that challenge. We give you a, a bonus point because we enjoyed it, but it wasn't a, a correct challenge of hesitation, repetition or deviation. So, 15 seconds for you, Paul, to continue with the knowledge starting now. There is a wizened old man who has the secrets of the universe locked into his mind. I once made... Derek Nimmo Look, challenge. If he's on the very top of Everest, he's not going to last five minutes, is he, really, with his secrets? <laughs> well, he's actually he's, he's in he's Tibet, like... and Everest is actually in the uh, Himalayas, but it's... Uh, Where do you think the Himalayas are? Uh, on the border of Tibet, but I don't think the Everest is actually... Well, actually, this is all redundant, because he's got a chalet, anyway. <laughs> he's got a paraffin gas fire. <laughs> anyway, I agree with your challenge, Derek, and you have eight seconds on the knowledge... What? Stop. What? <laughs> what do you mean you agree with the challenge? What nonsense? <laughs> Maybe nonsense, but I think it was correct. What was it? It was deviation, wasn't it? That's right. Yes, deviation was... from what? From what, Derek? <laughs> deviation from the truth. You can't have a little old man living up there with a paraffin stove with no oxygen on the top of Mount Everest. It's just not possible. <laughs> Peter you've a challenge, yes, Peter? Well, in a world in which Paul Merton can spend 18 years on the planet Venus, <laughs> surely uh, this is possible at the yeah. top of uh, Mount Everest. But that was in another show when he was on this planet. <laughs> Yes, I'm...
Well, I, I know it was, but with each show that passes, I keep a record of these events. Eight seconds for you, Derek. The knowledge starting A taxi now. driver with the knowledge would come out of Piccadilly Circus into Shaftesbury Avenue, turn right in Charing Cross Road, through to Falgus uh, Square. Stephen, it's no entry now, you can't do that. <laughs> Is as a man sitting on a mountain just as <laughs> at the end of the tea <laughs> Actually, you're wrong. I do know the road he's talking about. And, Derek, you are correct. You have a second to continue on the knowledge starting now. Through Trafalgar Square into the Strand. Stephen should also have an extra point because we did enjoy the challenge. So there we are. We've reached the end of the show. Peter supplied his usual wonderful sense of humour finished up in fourth place it's, uh, <laughs> but what's it matter what's it matter he was just behind Derek Nimmo Stephen Frost who's played the game less but was great <laughs> finished in second place he did remarkably well he didn't quite overtake Paul Merton he had most points so we say he's the winner Paul Merton Thank our four outstanding players of the game, Paul Merton, Peter Jones and Derek Nimmo and Stephen Frost. Also Liz Trott for keeping the score and blowing her whistle. And Ian Messeter for having thought of the game. And also Anne Jobson who has produced the show. And from me, Nicholas Parsons, from all of us. Goodbye. We hope you've enjoyed the show. And we'll tune in again the next time we take to the air to play just a minute. Till then, from all of us, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>